Greetings from LA, my dear, dear friends. This is Daisuke, and I very, very much hope that this video finds you well and in very, very good spirits wherever you are in the world. And I am continuing on with responding to the favorite films lists uh, that I have been uh, very, very, uh, I, I have been so honored to receive from uh, people on my Patreon page, uh, friends uh, and Patreons on my Patreon page who are uh, paid subscribers. Uh, and so uh, it's been a long pro it started about six months ago but I've been just behind I haven't been doing this I've been I've been uh, falling behind I was wanting to do a schedule but it just things happened uh, many things my fault uh, uh, I acknowledge so I apologize for the, the really terribly long delay and I don't, I know in the interim I know people maybe have been added or maybe people have left patreon that's totally fine I can understand but in any event I did receive these lists. Uh, at the time of uh, uh, your the paid patronage, so uh, the, I mean, at the, I, I really want to show my uh, gratitude and thanks uh, to all of you. Uh, and then today, I'd like to direct my gratitude and thanks to Derek Sorensen, my dear friend, our dear friend. Derek, uh, we have spoken a lot on the YouTube channel, comments, etc. So, and we've seen each other. Uh, you know, in the, in the uh, chats, etc. But now you're sharing with me, or you shared with me some months back, your favorite films list. So let me just look at this very quickly. And again, I apologize. Maybe I mo might not be able to talk about every single, every single film. But um, um, but uh, you know, uh, I will do my very best. So here we go. Let's see. So um, below are some of some of my all-time favorites. So that word some seems to be very significant as well. But anyway, let, let me uh, continue on here. So you have Persona, 2001 A Space Odyssey, Mulholland Drive, Tom Popo, Picnic at Hanging Rock, Spirited Away, Still Walking, Do the Right Thing, Jurassic Park, Chunking Express, Hoop Dreams, Wayne's World, Casablanca, F for Fake, Fast Times at Ridgemont High, Lost Highway, Gremlins, Suspiria, The Ring, Dark Water. Oh, interesting. That's interesting. Wow. Okay. Where do I begin? Let me just try to uh, go uh, as much as possible. I did speak about Fast Times at Ridgemont High, I think, in the context of the Criterion release uh, that was had, uh, I think, a year or so ago. I think maybe more. I forget. But it was fairly recent in the recent, say, two, two to three year uh, span of uh, Criterion uh, recent releases. That's for sure. Uh, and then, um, oh gosh, uh, I have to mention "Do the Right Thing." Um, I, I, I remember uh, when I was it was I was a teenager when I really began to get into the works of Spike Lee, and that was really fueled on by a a film course that I was so fortunate to be have been able to take uh, uh, at uh, school at university. And uh, the film course uh, was talking about New York filmmakers. And one of the filmmakers that was the subject of the course was Spike Lee. And so we had not all of Spike Lee's works, but a number of the key works. And Do the Right Thing was obviously one of them. And so, uh, you know, She's Got to Have It and then Do the Right Thing and uh, Malcolm X and so, but, uh, and others. But to Do the Right Thing, this was the, this was the one you could tell. It was the one that had just the 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 mix of the the environment and the color palette and the the way in which you have um, uh, maybe uh, certain messages both direct and also subliminal uh, that are aiming towards a kind of uh, concrete say uh, I mean it, it, it everything is a sort of pressure cooker uh, and you could feel almost the oppressive nature of the heat which itself is its own kind of metaphor. Uh, and so uh, this is an incredibly powerful film, and I think this has aged so. I mean, I don't know if it's it's. Uh, it, I don't know how, how well that speaks, right, in terms of of the uh, resonance and relevance of the film. But uh, it has aged, I think, so remarkably potently, and so it it and. Uh, I, I I like it's uh, it's the the way it represents a kind of community aspect. It's almost a, a tableau film. It it covers certain characters within the community. And I love how the camera seems to go from person to person to person to a certain degree. Uh, uh, and so I, I like that trajectory. And of course, things lead to a particular, say, geographical location in the film, and just everything just uh, I mean 
the things that happen in the film happen in the film, as you know. So, uh, but uh, it is a, it is a, uh, it is one of the key works of Spike Lee's filmography. It is one of the key works of American cinema of the late twentieth century, uh, and uh, I mean, it, and it has a, uh, it has a kind of a cultural uh, thrust or punch to it which I think has echoed uh, even as uh, the years have passed. So it's a great choice. Um, and Hoop Dreams. Yeah, so Hoop, Hoop Dreams, this is a, a film that I wasn't aware of until I saw Siskel and Ebert. And um, they were, uh, Siskel and Ebert were really praising this film. And I remember in particular, Roger Ebert was just championing this work. Because at the time, you know, we don't have Blu-rays and DVDs and streaming like we do now. So it was somewhat, I mean, it was, I mean, I would admit that my, my ability to watch this film was somewhat limited until, or extremely limited until it got a lot of, of uh, attention, uh, even to these to TV critic shows. And Cisco Libra at the time was a, a very, I think, widely seen show. And so, if a film was talked about in such high regard on a show like Cisco and Ebert, you the chances would be very high that it would probably get some kind of VHS release of some sort that could be accessible to someone like me, who's just you know. Uh, uh, just uh, could uh, could only watch these films, say, from renting them from the local video store, and that's what happened. You know, and so it was. Uh, it, it was. And I remember seeing it, and it was. It was one of those films where it, it. It's amazing how life can present this type of drama story. That is, it's like, it's 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 just. Um, it, it's like a, a work of literature, but it's it's real so uh, or the, you know the um, the documenta- documenting of the the stories of these of these uh, of these people as they are growing up over a certain number of years and a number of choices that they have to make uh, as well as other things of course so that is a really great choice really really great choice well done uh, and there's some films too that I've spoken a little bit about here um, uh, well on drive that's come up a lot in a number of other lists as well so um, uh, Chungking Express I've spoken about a little bit in the context of the Criterion release of the box set of the Wong Kar Wai films. Persona I think I've spoken a little bit, maybe not, so maybe I should speak more about that. I'm, I'm, I'm more and more, um, I find myself so surprised every time I see that film because uh, there are always things that, um, it might sound cliche, but it really applies for me in Persona, which is a, I, I do discover a new things every time I see it. Even very subliminal quick cuts, um, which is uh, which is quite fascinating. I mean, there's a really interesting way that this the Persona film starts, which reminds me a lot of how the film Fight Club ends. But um, uh, which is a uh, film by David Fincher. But uh, um, uh, uh, that is a a, a really uh, a really intense film. That's a really intense work. Well, that's great that you have it, and you have it atop your list. So I wonder if that signifies anything. I'm not sure, but uh, I've spoken a little bit about Suspiria. Uh, I'm a big fan of Suspiria. The Ring, Dark Water. I haven't spoken about these works, but I'm so happy that you've mentioned them. I'm I'm also a huge, huge fan. Really, really. I should try to speak more about those. I I'll try if I have time. But uh, uh, and then Gremlins. This was a film. I'm a, I'm a child of the '80s. I grew up in the '80s, and Gremlins was a huge deal. A really, really huge deal. Um, and I mean, I think about it now, and I think that's that's a pretty intense film to watch. When I first saw it, what would have I would have been what six or so, some six or seven, maybe younger or something like that. So uh, really, I enjoyed too Gremlins too, the new batch as well. I remember I had also the I think it was the Game Boy game. I think of Gremlins to the new batch. I, was, I enjoyed that very much. Um, and uh, F for Fake, you know, I think. Um, uh, I've seen this a number of times, thanks uh, to, for instance, the Criterion release uh, and Orson Welles. Um, I think it's uh, this is really great. I think it, in many ways it's almost like the embodiment of Orson Welles. At least, uh, you know how much we think we might know Orson Welles, the cinema persona, but in fact, everything seems to be an, an illusion or or pointing towards that direction. Casablanca, I haven't spoken at all about, but this was also a film that I saw so many times as a kid. Uh, Wayne's World. Uh, I remember when, uh, uh, I mean, I wasn't, I, I knew about Wayne's World, the, the skit, the S- uh, SNL skit, but uh, when the film came out, actually the film was really popular uh, among my friends uh, when it came out. Wayne's World too as well, but uh, I think Wayne's World was uh, incredibly popular. 
Uh, and so I saw that a lot of times on VHS as well. Uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, all right, so sorry about that. So um, anyway, uh, and still walking. Of course, uh, I have to speak more about, I've spoken a little about uh, correlated films, but I haven't spoken about still walking. That is a really great choice. That is such a great choice. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, well done for including that. Spirited Away. Uh, I know there have been a number of Jubilee films that have been mentioned on other lists too. So bravo to you, my friend, for also including Spirited Away, uh, which is, I think, in many ways a kind of, of almost really uh, excellent, one of the most, uh, maybe almost perfect examples of a sort of distillation of Japanese mythology and folklore in a way that is given a lot of bite and a lot of of uh, uh, passion and feeling in a kind of modern uh, retelling, if you will, in the form of this work. Uh, and it's uh, famous and uh, very popular, uh, even, you know, it's popular in Japan. It's popular. I mean, the iconography of the film is still very prevalent in Japan, as well as the iconography of many other Ghibli films. I think for good reason, because the film is really, uh, it stands out so well. And I love too how it. There's a lot of things that are just so inexplicable that you just. What, why is that happening? But you don't question it. Just it. It is it. What it is because it. That's what it is. So. Uh, it's great. And then picking a hanger rock. I've spoken about uh, on this channel a number of times. I love this film. I, I think. Um, there's just a, a number of things. Just a number of things like. Um, uh, um, you know, uh, Helen Morse's characterization, of Mademoiselle, or the you know the the girls, is that in the interactions with the earth and the rock itself, and uh, um, uh, Mrs. Appleyard. Oh my goodness, Rachel Roberts is Mrs. Appleyard. My goodness, yes. Oh, what a film. and the music too. I I think I mentioned it too. There's a, a sense of also there's the pan flute music which is very famous, but there's also some patches passages, passages of the music which remind me personally of of a giallo Italian giallo thrillers. So uh, that's a great film, uh, Peter Weir. Uh, Tampopo. Ah, oh, that's another great film. That's another great. That's this one I I first saw on VHS. Um, uh, many years ago, and uh, it made quite the impression. Yes, and so, uh, and uh, um, sorry about that. I cut away again. I apologize. Technical glitches abound. I apologize. But let me just continue on very quickly before I forget. So Tampopo. So you mentioned Tampopo. So well, well done. Uh, I, I think that's uh, that is a very clever film. It's very witty. It, it's uh, it 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 goes in quite extreme directions actually. Um, so uh, um, yeah, quite bold. Um, Sometimes quite shocking, but uh, I think that's part of the, the 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 broad nature of the tableau that's being painted. You know, um, uh, entertainment, food, sex, and death, and life, uh, and that, right the daily slices of life. You know, uh, like you know the pieces of the chashu in, in a bowl of ramen. So, uh, but any of it. Um, uh, two thousand one, a space odyssey. So, okay, so two thousand one, a space odyssey. I I think. Have I spoken about this film? I, mean, I feel like I have, but maybe I haven't. So I, I, uh, I, I have uh, a. I mean, this is another film that I've just seen a number of times, uh, and so I, I can't quite decouple my feelings with the film uh, from, say. You know how would I felt my initial reactions because I don't I don't have that sensibility about the, my feelings about two thousand one space odyssey. It's it's just something that's always been there, um, and it's something that I think uh, when I was young I didn't quite get into it, but as I grew older I got more and more and more into it uh, to the point where it it it, it I think it Kubrick films usually do that for me. I, I tend to respond somewhat negatively to them. Uh, maybe neutral to negative to them when I first watch the films, or but then, or when I when I'm younger, but then as I grow older, um, they all have this uh, impact on me, uh, including the most uh, recent, say, re-release uh, from um, uh, in terms of the film *Fear and Desire*, which has a, an interesting uh, impact even years later. It it's, it seems to be. Uh, I mean, but uh, two thousand one, *A Space Odyssey*. Uh, I mean, you, you don't need. There have been many other much better and more eloquent and more articulate people 
who have uh, lauded uh, and sung the praises of this film much better than I could ever hope to achieve. Um, uh, but let me just say that I, I like the the way in which uh, the the film, I mean, among other things, is for me um, toying with or playing with or perhaps even recognizing that or identifying and maybe even examining that really strange netherworld, that gray area between motion and stillness. And you get this too in a lot of the scenes in space. You know, there, there are mo things where you have things that seem to be in motion, but they also seem to be still at the same time, right? You know, you get these ships or these satellites that seem to be moving because of the forces um, uh, uh, that are propelling them through space. Uh, and also you see also friends of reference uh, moving uh, planetoids or, or, or the, the motion of stars, etc., to suggest further motion. But you also know that the frame of reference is such that they are actually inert in space, which is interesting. So this contradiction between motion and stillness. The same thing, too, with the, something like the monolith. You know, the monolith seems to be something that's really inert. I mean, there's this hard, um, uh, essentially, stone slab or you know, some kind of rock apparently looks like rock slab and it's just this thing that's still in the ground or in space whatever the case may be but then we realize that there's actually a lot of motion to it there's a mo movement to it which i think is a really quite uh, quite fascinating and also to um even with things like um I mean, I don't go into too much detail, but there's some um, images that involve like motion, like going through maybe uh, transcending time and space, you know, or stars, like a star field of sorts. That also feels like we're going through things, but also standing still at the same time. And that kind of inner, uh, that kind of uh, innate contradiction, is, I think, is one of the things that that uh, 2001: A Space Odyssey does so well. It also it you know, as a kind of metaphor, it also maybe exposes sort of the uh, the what one might call in that film the uh, the contradiction of uh, evolution, and that uh, there might be the illusion or the semblance of progressing or moving forward. But how much are we really moving forward, and how much are we really standing still, and how much of the progression uh, towards a kind of evolutionary point in the in the future how much of that is quote unquote progress or how much of it is almost even standing still perhaps even a regression and i'm talking about metaphorically and also morally etc so um I, I really like that and you can see that also uh, in the sort of fundamentals of the cinematic craft right and things that are moving and also seemingly still at the same time so i really like that i, I really like that as well and i, I didn't really appreciate that point of the film until uh, much later in my life and so and once that clicked it, it it really opened up a lot of things for me much you know maybe i that was my my own way of touching the monolith so that's another thing too which i really like about films i like films that show a kind of evolutionary leap or a jump from one point to another and this film has that in huge large heapings so uh but uh, anyway it's a wonderful choice. I'm so sorry. I'm I'm just going on and on uh, with these really terrible comments, uh, uninformed comments about the film. So I apologize. But Derek, wonderful choices. As I'm I'm very happy with this. Uh, I should once again uh, extend to you my deepest apologies for my lateness of my reply. I hope you can forgive me, my dear friend. But uh, uh, thank you so much. It, it's always great to see you. I know we see each other on the YouTube comments and chats, etc. So uh, wonderful to know you uh, and uh, wonderful to always have the opportunity for me to talk with you. I'm so honored to be able to talk with you. And I hope those conversations continue here or Patreon or YouTube or, or wherever the case may be. So, Derek, thank you so much. Uh, and so thank you very much to all my dear friends at Patreon for your continued support and guidance and and uh, a kindness and consideration. And also uh, directly, of course, to Derek, my dear friend, our dear friend, for showing us uh, your great cinema taste and setting a great example for what it is to be a film lover. So thank you so much. Uh, so I will continue on with these, but until the next video, my dear, dear friends, uh, please continue to be happy and healthy and well, and keep on watching a lot of great, great, great movies, like our dear friend Derek. And so uh, thank you, and cheers.